Hmm, what do I think about when I'm choosing my backpacking gear? What's up everybody, I'm Dan and welcome to Backpacking Adventures where we talk about everything backpacking, hiking and gear. And if those interest you, consider subscribing and make sure you hit that bell notification so you don't miss a thing. My buddy Dave from Off Grid recently released a video where he was talking about what his philosophies are for purchasing gear and choosing gear for a backpacking trip. And he asked me in the video if I would explain what my philosophies are. So today I'm gonna to talk about some of the things that I look at and things that I consider when, one, I'm buying new gear, and two, um, what, I, what's, what is my thought process for choosing gear for a specific backpacking trip? Dave has a great channel called Off Grid and he talks about gear, he talks about backpacking trip, and he always has a lot of these hashtag videos which are pretty cool. And this video is actually timely because I'm planning for leaving for a trip this weekend. So make sure you check out his channel. Now let's get into what I think about when choosing gear. And as a disclaimer, remember, this is how I do it. This is my philosophy. Maybe wrong, maybe right, but this is just how I do it. So first let's talk about my philosophy when I go to buy gear. I have a few things that I look at when I'm buying gear and it's not in any particular order. So these things I, I go over, I don't really prioritize one over the other. These are just some things that I look at. And there's really nothing scientific about it. I, I have no other scientific method or any kind of checklist that I go through. I just kind of look at these things and go with my gut. So I guess the main things are weight, price, comfort, and functionality. And, as and aside from those things, I try to look for gear made by companies that are made in the US. And hopefully I can find a small company like Hilltop Packs that's located in Pennsylvania. And I know what some of you are gonna say, cottage companies are just so much more expensive. You know, that may be true, but in my opinion, the quality of their products are just much better for the most part, and you can't beat their customer service. I mean, th they'll go over backwards for you, and this goes for most, if not all, of the cottage companies that I've been working with. First, let's talk about weight. And yes, to me, if I'm gonna be buying gear, it, it's gonna have to be light, relatively. I've been there with a backpack weighing over 50 pounds, and I just didn't like it. It made the trip difficult and it was tough. And the last few years, I wanted to hike longer miles during the day, go a little bit faster, and mainly for the reason is I just wanted to do longer trips in less time. So as an example, I just came back from a 70 mile trip and we did that in four days. So if I was only doing, let's say 10 miles a day, then that would take me seven days. So it just, I, I kind of like, I like doing long trails, but I, I don't like spending a lot of time doing them. And I just wanted to be more comfortable while hiking since I'm hiking longer mile days. And how do I do that? Well, I lightened my backpack over the last couple years. Am I an ultralight backpacker? And for those of you that don't know, ultralight is when your base weight, which is all your gear minus your consumables like water, fuel, and food, is less than 10 pounds. So am I an ultralight backpacker? Sometimes, sometimes not. My gear individually, piece by piece, I really try to stick with ultralight gear. But my base weight is sometimes under 10 pounds, but not always, especially in the winter time. Never under 10 pounds in the winter, I'm taking just so much stuff. Do I have to have the lightest gear? No. Is it the most important to me? No. Is it something that I seriously consider when looking at gear? Yes. The next one is price, and this is pretty straightforward. I choose the, the gear that basically I can afford. And the one thing I don't do is when I'm looking at a piece of gear or comparing it, one piece of gear to another piece of gear, is if one is more expensive, I don't necessarily automatically assume that the most expensive gear is better because a lot of times it's not. I have some budget gear that is either just as good or better than the expensive stuff. Now, if I want something and it's expensive and I just don't have the money for it right now, I do my best not to just choose something that is less expensive, what I think may be the second best choice. I will just 
wait and save my money because I know most likely I'm not gonna be as happy with that other piece of gear. So I'll just take the time and save up for it. Another thing I look at is comfort. It has to perform and it has to be comfortable or something that makes me comfortable. Comfort is very important to me while I'm hiking and at camp. However, comfort is subjective. What I am thinking of comfort may not necessarily be what you think of as comfort. So I guess what I'm saying is it needs to provide me with an adequate level of comfort that I'm expecting. I already talked about weight, but to me, weight is also a factor of comfort and the two, to me, go hand in hand. When I'm carrying a lot of weight on my back, it definitely makes a difference on how my feet, my knees, my back, and my overall body feels at the end of a long hiking day. A heavier pack means I go a little slower and I may not do quite as many miles. A lighter pack to me usually means a more comfortable experience while hiking. And just to qualify what I'm talking about, a heavier pack and a lighter pack, I'm not talking about a difference of one or two pounds. I'm more so talking about a difference of upwards of over five pounds difference. I really don't notice a difference really while hiking if my pack for one day is one pound or two pounds heavier than, or even one or two pounds lighter. And that's why I go back and forth sometimes with one trip I'll take my hammock setup, one trip I'll take my tent setup. I like both pretty much equally, but my hammock setup is about one and a half pounds or 0.7 kilograms heavier than my tent setup. But do I really notice that difference? No, not really. So now let's talk about the functionality of the gear. It has to be functional. It has to work and it has to work when I need it to. This is more trial and error because you don't know if something's really gonna work or work for you until you actually use it. But in a lot of ways, that's where YouTube comes in. I do research and I watch gear review videos all the time about certain gear that I'm looking at. I try to get their opinions and see what their experiences are, but I do not buy gear just because another YouTuber either recommends it or bought it and is using it. Now, speaking of functionality, what a lot of people do when they're choosing gear, it's very important to them, is that a piece of gear can also be multifunction. I don't do that. I'm not one of those backpackers that will specifically only choose gear that can be used for multiple things. Sure, that's great. And if that's what you like to do, that's, that's totally fine. I'm just not that way. A lot of people do it just to save weight and space. But to me, the way I look at this is that then it becomes a single point of failure for multiple things. So one piece of gear can then do the job of, we'll say, three things. And if that piece of gear breaks, well then instead of you not having one thing, one function, you're now missing three. But you know, I'm fine with non-critical things that I take being multifunctional because if it breaks, it's not a safety issue or it's not that much of a comfort issue. So choosing gear that is multifunctional, it's not high on my list at all. It may be for you and that's great and that's how you do it. It just isn't for me. So those are the things I kind of look at when I'm buying new gear. So now let's talk about how, what's my thought process for choosing the gear that I'm gonna take on a specific backpacking trip. And really, it's not really complicated at all. And I only have two things that I really consider. And one of them is weather. And the other is just what kind of trip am I going on? The main thing I do when choosing gear for a trip is I look at the weather. That is by far the biggest factor that I look at that helps me determine what gear to take. To me, my gear is determined more by environmental factors than it is by anything else. What will the highs and low temperatures be for that trip? Will it be wet? Will it be a lot of rain? Those are the things that really, to me, determine what gear I take. A lot of people talk about trip duration. To me, duration has very little to do with the gear that I choose. I only really take duration into account when I'm trying to determine how much food I'm gonna take, how much fuel I'm gonna take on a trip, and how much, since I film, how much battery power am I gonna take? I will take the same gear, whether I'm going on a two-day trip or a week-long trip, like I said, aside from the extra battery power. So really, my gear really only changes trip to trip based on weather. The other factor that I kind of look at is what kind of trip am I going to take? Am I going out there just to complete a trail and do high miles every day? 
Or am I going with a bunch of people and we're not doing high miles and we're gonna have more of a camping experience? If it's gonna be high miles, I most likely go alone. Or if I'm with somebody, it's clear that the expectation is, you know, miles before smiles. You bang out the miles every day. You hike long days from early morning until later at night. When you get to camp, you basically just set up, eat, and you go to sleep and you do it all over again the next day. Very little time sitting around camp. So for those trips, I pack for lightness and speed. And I don't really think about things that I would need specifically at camp, like a camp chair. I wouldn't take a camp chair on one of those trips. That's just me. So if I'm going with friends or I'm just going on a trip where I want to spend a lot more time at camp, then weight isn't so much of a factor. I'll hike less miles during the day. I will get to camp a little bit earlier so I can set up. I will bring maybe a chair, a saw for processing wood and have a fire and just relax around camp. So on those kind of trips, I just take more stuff. So basically it just comes down to mainly the weather and secondly, what kind of trip. So overall, that's how I buy my gear and that is how I choose my gear. Now it's time that I tag a few other YouTube channels so that they can also let us know what their thought processes are. First one I'm gonna tag is Jacqueline from RVA Hiker Girl. I recently found her channel and it is great. She has a lot of trip videos and she sections hikes the Appalachian Trail a lot and has a lot of videos on that and just overall a great channel. So make sure you check her channel out. Next tag is my buddy John from Unpaved Explorer. Now John's channel is great. He talks about a lot of different things. He has a lot of meetups with other YouTubers and he does a lot of cooking stuff, which is pretty neat. And I got a lot of good cooking, backcountry cooking ideas from him. So make sure you check out his channel as well. And last, but certainly not least, is Melissa from The Unlikely Hiker. Melissa talks about gear. She does hiking videos, trip videos. And one of the things that really impresses me a lot is she bushwhacks. She goes off the beaten path a lot and can navigate around. And that's, that's really impressed with me. I love watching her stuff. So check out her channel as well. So now, what do you think about when you go to buy gear and when you choose gear for your, your backpacking trip? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe, give it a thumbs up and all that fun stuff. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.